thank you for staying with us. Adoption in Nigeria is often shrouded in secrecy and sometimes considered a taboo. And with the many fruits of the womb Christian crusades across the country, it may be difficult for couples unable to have children of their own to consider adoption because of the stigma. Our guest today is the perfect person to speak about this topic. Pastor Itua Igudalu is a pastor, an accountant, a thinker, a social reformer, and a loving husband and father. Remember, you can join the conversation if you tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways or SMS 081 803 84663. Thank you for joining us, Pastor Ito. It's a pleasure to have you here tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for inviting. Thank, Thank you for coming. For coming. Thank you. So I feel like I've known you all my life, and here's yeah. why. So I grew up in Ibadan, and I know that your wife, um, Ibidu, yes. grew up in Ibadan. In fact, not very far from where I grew up, uh, Bodija. Really? <laughs> so I feel a certain kind of connection right now. <laughs> I grew up in Ibadan too. Oh, you oh, did? Yeah. Oh, I didn't wow. know that. You say, oh, I was going to say that. Did you go to wow. ISA? For A levels, yes. Wow. See, see, we're great like this. It's a small <laughs> world you after all. Yes, yes, I do. You can tell, can't you? Yeah, I yeah. can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 I, um, I think I'll go first with my question. And, okay. you know, our topic today is adoption and taboos. And so my question is from a religious standpoint and Christianity. So there's Christianity as a whole accepts the idea of assisted reproduction but advises a lot of caution going through that route. However, the African tradition is pronatalist, which is essentially, I would rather have my child myself, and you know, as opposed to exploring other options. Mm -hmm. How does the church address this di dichotomy? Like, how do you then strike this balance between it's okay to do this, and then there's people who have this cultural belief that you know, they'd rather have their own children for whatever reason. Well, part of the church's responsibility is to break culture. Right. You know, a lot of people are very social, very cultural, and they think things that are cultural are things that are right or normal or to do. Right. And you can't blame them because we're all from some root or some source or the other. But part of what Christ came to do and part of what God is trying to do is to ensure that the relationship with God and the truth about God far outweigh and are far above culture. And just to speak the truth from the mind of God. The problem with us in Africa is this issue of whether you are fertile or you are fruitful yeah. or you can give your husband. And unfortunately, it's the ladies that seem to get the wrong end of the stick because everybody seems to think the man is okay. Yeah. Exactly. But most of the time, the man yeah. is not quite okay. Right. And they just think that the lady is a baby factory. She's been married to produce children for the husband. <laughs> and if she doesn't do that, then there's something wrong it's with okay. her. She's committed a sin yeah. or there's something wrong somewhere. And it's not quite like that. If you look through biblical history, the Christianity that we practice, you sometimes even find that God deliberately delays conception for various reasons, okay? So Abraham yeah. was barren for 89 years thereabouts yeah. before he had his first child. And his first child was some kind of surrogacy. You know, in today's language, it would be some kind of surrogacy. Yes, exactly. Because Sarah then spoke to Hagar, her maid, have children on my behalf. You know, the child was supposed to belong to Sarah on the behalf uh, of Sarah and Abraham. Yeah. So that was Ishmael. Yeah. And then at the age of 199, Abraham then had his own first biological uh, child, as it were. Isaac, his son also incidentally, was barren for 20 years. Mm -hmm. He got married at 40. He didn't have a baby till he was 60. And he had a set of twins, and that was it. Okay, and he didn't have any other children. As for Jacob, he reproduced quite quickly. But one of his wives, Rachel, was also barren for about six years before she had the first child called Joseph, you know, and so on and so on. And then he, with him also, he had four surrogate children mm -hmm. also, Ishaka, Isaka, and um, I think uh, if you, I can't remember their names, but they're all there, yeah. the sons of Jacob. So it's all been there. Elizabeth, the yeah. cousin, 
of Mary also was barren mm. for many years until she had John the Baptist, and that was it. Uh, Anna, who gave birth to Samuel, oh, wow. the also was in the Bible. for many exactly. years, yeah. and yeah. that was it. So um, there are many reasons why God delays conception, mm -hmm. many, many reasons. And um, it is not necessarily a bad thing. It is just to understand the mind of Christ, of what God is trying to do, and to key into it. Fantastic. Okay, so Pastor, my question is, how soon or how long, how long is long enough for you to start considering taking that route of adoption I think in a if, marriage? I think if you've been five years married and you have not had um, natural conception, yeah. I think it's the right time to start thinking of adopting. You know, the, 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 the irony sometimes, you know, is that when, as a pastor, when women have come to me and they've had challenges with conception, mm -hmm. I usually put them in charge of children. Mm -hmm. You know, I usually make them okay. sort of look after the, the children, children of others. Yeah. And most of the time it has worked. I cannot tell you what the biological thing is yeah. or even what the spiritual thing is. But all I know is that when you look after others, yeah. God tends to open your womb and look after you and you look after them like your own and it's funny that you so, say that easy just so you to, okay. before you ask your question remember we were talking earlier and we were saying I, well i was saying that yes. typically right you find that people who usually are waiting on get, being it's a parent Lord, and, yes. yeah find when they go that route of adopting or whatever method of getting a child somehow they then yeah, have pregnant, this yes. miraculous co conception and you're like mm -hmm. oh okay so did i need to do this first and for me the way i interpret that is Maybe that's the way of God testing whether indeed you're ready for this because mm. in truth, if you want to be a mother, you don't need to wait to have yours. You, do you understand? So exactly. yeah, you, you can go ahead with your question. Okay, so um, uh, there, in terms of break, to break cultures currently, um, the Catholic um, charities, we have the Catholic charities who aid people and to aid their couples to adopt children. So do we have something like that in the church currently? that there is a, a, a panel or um, a set, set set up to aid people in adopting children? Well, my wife runs a very strong foundation, mm -hmm. Ibidoni Twaigudalo Foundation, that actually sponsors people to first of all try IVF uh, conception. Right. And then we have also a foundation called ASAG, you know, yeah, it's called it's the Heritage okay. Adoption Foundation, which actually mm. encourages people to adopt. Not only that, to supervise the adoption. Wow. Not only that, to counsel during adoption. Beautiful. Not only that, to ensure that there are no challenges. So we right. sort of handhold hand people through the process. throughout that process. So it what is. are the reactions you get from couples that found themselves in this particular um, situation. What was the was the feedback you get from them? Oh, they've been very happy. You know, um, usually what 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 I've seen through the cycle is that yeah, one year, two year, three, we're believing God, we're believing God, we're trusting God. We're <laughs> Holy Ghost fire. You know. <laughs> Yeah, four, year five, well, maybe, yeah, six, pastor, should I, <laughs> this and that. And then by the time they adopt, they're saying to themselves, why, why didn't I do this earlier? But pastor, in a situation, either of the couple, either one of the couple does not agree to it. You have to encourage Both and parties persuade. have to agree. They Both have parties to. have to agree. You have yeah. to encourage and persuade. But you find eventually that both people sort of come on the same platform and together they work towards adopting the student. And then we found sometimes that even the person that was initially a bit reluctant is somebody then finally when the adoption comes through, they lead the charge. Now, you know, another so question, Pastor, yeah. which is a bit personal. Yes. I know that you've done, you've gone through adoption. Yes. How easy were you able to transition into a father? And do you really love those kids like yours? Is there a difference between their biological children and adoptive children? Is there, do you think there is any difference? With every due respect to my wife, mm. I think those children, after my salvation, are the best thing that has happened to me. Wow. Mm. I look at my children every day, I thank God for the day that I met them. Mm. 
you know, um, it's like they were made for me. Mm. That's how God works it mm -hmm. out. Um, I can't wait to get home now. Oh, <laughs> <Tomorrow, laughs> home with my children. Yeah. You know, I don't even think for one second that they're not mine. They are wow. mine. They're mm. my children. Mm. I love them with a passion. I protect them fiercely. Mm. I look after them. I take them to school every morning. Mm. I make sure that they're back from school on time. I break meetings to go back home wow. to be with my children. I even, my travel is around, is around, around them. my travel. I don't travel for too long because I want to watch them grow. grow. I want to be part of every second of their lives. <laughs> I want to ensure <coughs> that I give them everything that I probably didn't have and everything that I know to make them succeed. So there's absolutely no difference. No difference. Wow. And incredibly, they look like us. Oh, yeah. Isn't it my wife yeah. You know, when I see my boy, it reminds me of my father. Oh. I look like my father, just a darker version. Mm -hmm. And my boy is fair, just like my father. Wow. My girl has my father's toes. Wow. She has her mother's wow. complexion. She has my looks. <laughs> it's unbelievable. God is so great. God is awesome. <laughs> so I, I have a question, okay. right? And it's just on the back of this question. Did you get any backlash? You know, yeah. from the church? Church? Not yeah. the church. Church. From, from family. From the family, cultural the public. No, you know, I said church because, mm -hmm. you know, some people may feel like, oh, no, we're supposed to, you're supposed look to be the pastor. To we look up to you and you should have this kind of faith and, you know, we expect that you must just, yeah. some people can be. Well, there could be a few church. people, yeah. either in the church or outside the church, mm -hmm. who are, but they were very polite, right. you know. Okay. But what was most important to me was that I encouraged more people. Interesting. Mm -hmm. To now yeah. step, out step out yeah. and feel that this was the right thing to mm. do. Mm. And indeed, it is the right thing to do. Absolutely. You know, the irony yeah. is that Moses was adopted by yes. Pharaoh's daughter. Exactly. Jesus Christ himself was adopted, was adopted of course, yeah. by his father called yeah. Joseph. Joseph. Yeah. And there are many, In fact, many it's examples. It's even fair to say that Mary was a surrogate mother because you know, she was carrying on behalf of she was the a, Holy Spirit. <laughs> she was the perfect surrogate mother. See? You understand? Mm -hmm. So adoption has been going on for Fun years. On. Lot was adopted by yeah. Abraham and so on and so forth. There are many, many examples. Even in our okay, time, even, Nelson even, Mandela. Even, even <laughs> Esther yeah. was adopted by her uncle Mordecai. Exactly. And then she ended up being the queen. So mm -hmm. it's, there's absolutely nothing. In fact, sometimes God does it deliberately. Like you said, to, yes, to test you, child. to prove you, Absolutely. to see what's inside of you, mm -hmm. and to let you know that a child is a, a child. child. Is a child. Fantastic. Mm. Now, there was a question she said, asked earlier on, and she said that um, the process of you adopting the children, how was it? Was it cumbersome? Was it easy? Was it simplified for you? In Nigeria, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Lagos, Lagos State, they're quite... Okay experience right. and sophisticated. And how long did it take, please? For me, not too long. You know, I've been running an orphanage for about 20 years. Wow. Even Very before I needed a child. A child. Mm -hmm. Okay, as a mm -hmm. pastor, mm -hmm. as a single pastor, okay. I just knew that I had to respond to the needs in society. So we run like 12 foundations for the deaf, for the blind, for the weak, for the poor, mm -hmm. and then we started an orphanage. The lady that I asked to start the orphanage herself had been believing God for children for mm -hmm. about six years. Okay, she had had problems even with her womb at the last uh, miscarriage. She had about three miscarriages, and her womb had been badly affected. So when I said to her, "Listen, I'm starting a, uh, a, an, orphanage. A, an orphanage, and I want you to run it," initially she said, "How could you do this to me? You know that I'm believing God for children. How do you want me to look?" After the train of others, I said, that's exactly what I'm asking you to do. do so she started doing it very, very enthusiastically. Wow. And within about a year and a half, God gave her own natural boy. Yeah. Wow. You know, Fantastic. And God just compensated her. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And then we've gone on like that, you know. So we now have two orphanages. We're planning a third. And if possible, a village for children mm. that need help. Wow. Okay. Not only that, we also do a lot of, um, uh, we have children we look after in terms of scholarship, in terms of um, disadvantaged children, and we look after them like our own. 
And one of the things we did in our, in our orphanages was to give them the standard that I will have in my house. Mm -hmm. Whatever I cannot tolerate in my house, I won't tolerate in my orphanage. Fantastic. I'm not doing those children a favor to exactly. train our mind. Hmm. Every single of the way. one of them. How old is the Perfect. oldest? In so the orphanage. Well, we had two that we had to take for care. Not that they really needed okay. their Emergency mother. Protection. Just gave them to us, yeah. you know, because she couldn't handle them. They're about 18. Hmm. Okay. In fact, I had a meeting on them today. I've asked their grandmother hmm. whether she wants to come and pick them up and look after them if she's able. And we'll support her. And if she doesn't, then she should let us know so that we know how to continue. So you can even take them <coughs> from even beyond 18? Oh, they are our children. Hmm. Fantastic. And we'll send, they all go to school. Yeah. They are all going to go to university. Wow. They are all going to become whatever God wants well, them to become. To be Every single child there, until they are adopted, is my child. Fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. So um, I'm going to ask the last question because we haven't got much time. Uh, okay. So the children at the orphanage, I know you said some were given to you. How do you get them generally? Like how do they, yeah. do you get children into the orphanage? Well, different ways, okay. you know. Some put in a dustbin. Oh, wow. Some, some girl gave birth in front of the So church. do you have a team that just goes around checking for the, the people who bring them? Typically, people would bring them. Good Samaritans, Samaritans. will find them. Right. And then they know that we're ready to receive them. And we receive them. So you do not to reject any child? No child. Wow. No child. Even if the child has there? physical challenges. Yeah. You know, one of our children uh, was had a bit of autism and mm. physical challenge, and we took her in. We didn't even know she'd be adopted. Well, but a couple came from Belgium yeah. and took her, and took her back to Belgium. Wow. And it's incredible. Well, yeah. how are you funding this? Oh, we For donate, food. people Donations, donate. Yeah. You know, Nigerians are very kind also. It's yeah. really yeah. 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 People just walk in off the streets. Mm. One million, half a million wow. bags of rice. These are even last week uh, the the Danish ambassador, yeah. the ambassador of Denmark, yeah. came and came and mm -hmm. was ready to partner with us. Mm -hmm. uh, Nigerians, if they find a good cause, yeah. uh, they donate. We're still trying to persuade a lot of our friends. I've said to my friends, I say you spend too money, much money on clothes. Parties. You spend too much money on parties. Children, spend too agree. much money on wedding. Spend too much money on champagne. You're not even supposed <laughs> to drink champagne. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what one bottle of champagne will do to the life of a child? Even to the life of a child. Of a child. And you know the challenge in Nigeria is education. Mm. Totally. We need to Which educate is something that we talk about a lot on the show. We need to make yeah. sure everybody is knowledgeable. Absolutely. We need to make sure everybody is informed. Mm. Yes. We need to make sure everybody desires mm. to do good things for Nigeria. Nobody should check out anywhere. Mm. We have everything we Thank need you. in Nigeria. We must come together. We must speak truth to power. We must take charge of our security. We must educate our children. And we must decide who is going to lead us. Not only that, we must restructure this country and have a brand new constitution that, means that allows back. us to do what we call true federalism so that mm. Nigeria can truly develop. Absolutely. You know, Nigeria is a great country. It is. Pastor right. is coming I'm back. I'm in awe. <laughs> No, he's definitely you know, coming this back. This is a positive note. You know, we had the topic we had yesterday was a bit of doom and gloom, like exactly. almost no hope for Nigeria. So hearing this, it's very positive, I am hopeful very for progressive. I'm and why I'm wearing this, yes. if you want to know, we had Thank a service you. for the military today. Ah. So I said to, you know, like a remembrance. Look the part. Oh, so every awesome. year we do that, right. and then I pick one of their uniforms oh. and wear. So this and is the chief of general yeah. staff came, and then we had the walk also <laughs> yeah. after the match, the walk for peace, the work for security, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the work for a change in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So I'm awesome. appealing to you ladies too, we must join this challenge for okay. a change in Nigeria. We Not just taking, praying, praying in church, we must We're take actually action. action. No, yes. yes. action. no, what you should be telling yeah. Pastor is that he's coming back. <laughs> oh, definitely, you're so, coming back. Yes, <laughs> definitely. That's a, a topic on its own. Call us on board, we will come. We will invite <laughs> Please you. Please do. We <laughs> must invite you. Please. And we must cooperate. Them. All the faiths, yes. the Muslims, Absolutely. the Christians, mm -hmm. we reach out to everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I do a lot of interfaith. Yeah. Nigeria must be great again. Absolutely. We have yeah. all. I like that mantra. Nigeria will be great again. All. It takes. Absolutely. I mean, brilliant people like you. Thank Those you. in Nigeria <laughs> that people make magic out of nothing. Yeah. Absolutely. And, Very true. You know, we had a program last, towards right. the end of last year, the first and only cardio surgeon who is also a kidney specialist is a Nigerian boy. Yeah. 
just about 50 years old, wow. went to University of Ife, the first and only in the whole world. So he's even Nigerian. So all this training. is education. Education. Fantastic. That's the rest of bane of our problem. If mm. we can educate our people yeah. and mm. open their eyes, then we can become anything. Thank you so Fantastic. much. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Pastor Itwa. Ladies, I believe that, you know. We've been blessed. <laughs> We've been blessed. I like the trajectory oh. he was going through. Yeah. Education. Yeah. How we all came back. Passionate. And we'll be talking about that. So it's exactly. clear that we're touching the right issues. Yes. So, Absolutely. Pastor, do we, can we extract the promise from you that you will come back? No problem. Thank you, I'll sir. Be <laughs> and Anyways. can I pray for you? Yes, sir. By all means, um, we'll just, shall we take the break? Yes, yes please. please. Okay. We'll take a short break, and when we return, the head of adoption department in Lagos State will join us. <laughs> 